Hi everyone, welcome to our Museum Beatles channel and thank you for watching! Today we are going to take a look at the Japanese quail, a bird appreciated worldwide. Unlike the city pigeon we dissected earlier, which thrives in an aerial urban lifestyle, the Japanese quail is a ground-dwelling bird, and this video will explore how its anatomy reflects this lifestyle. It's not necessary to watch the pigeon dissection to understand this video, but if you'd like to check it out first, you can click on the video here. In this video, we'll explore the anatomy of the Japanese quill, focusing on its feathers, muscles and organs, and we'll share how some of these features are suited to its ground-dwelling lifestyle. We hope you enjoy this video! Looking at the Japanese quill, its body shape and features immediately reflect its life as a ground-dwelling species. It has a rather plump body, compact and rounded, which gives it a low center of gravity that helps it move steadily and quickly across uneven terrain. It has short but sturdy legs that are built for walking and running, which allows it to quickly dart away from predators. The slightly curved beak of the quill is adapted for pecking at seeds, grains and insects hidden in the soil. Its wings are small and rounded, not meant for long journeys, but for short explosive bursts of flight to escape danger. Another key feature of the Japanese quail is its camouflage. The feathers are mottled, which means that they have a mix of irregular spots and streaks in different shades of brown and tan. This is giving them a camouflaged appearance that closely resembles the ground or low vegetation, which is effective in open fields or shrubland where the bird is often found. When sensing danger, they tend to freeze rather than flee, relying on their cryptic plumage to avoid detection. This strategy allows them to remain undetected until the last possible moment. If the threat persists, they may suddenly flash into the air in an explosive burst of flight or dart away on foot to find cover under shrubs. More on the muscles that make this possible later. The pigeon we studied earlier has longer pointed wing feathers, designed for sustained long distance flight and its fan tail feathers provide precise steering during aerial maneuvers. In contrast, the feathers of the Japanese quail are perfectly adapted for its ground-dwelling lifestyle and its environment. Living in regions with significant temperature variations, the quail has soft, dense body feathers that provide excellent insulation, helping it regulate body temperature in both hot summers and cold winters. The Japanese quail has short, rounded wing feathers that are specialized for those rapid explosive bursts of flight, which they use for quickly escaping predators. And their short tail feathers enhance balance and agility, particularly during running or quick evasive moments. Time to start skinning! The Japanese quail was initially domesticated in Japan around the 11th to 12th century and primarily kept as songbirds. By the early 1900s, breeders started to focus on enhancing egg production. This led to a thriving industry by 1940. However, the devastation of World War II caused a sharp decline in Japanese quail populations, wiping out the carefully bred songbird lines and nearly eliminating those developed for egg production. After the war, breeders relied on a small number of surviving quail to rebuild the industry, and it's believed that today's commercial and research breeds all descend from this resilient remnant population. In the 1950s, the Japanese quill gained recognition as a valuable model organism in scientific research because of its rapid growth, high egg production and ease of maintenance. Today, they are widely used in studies ranging from genetics and developmental biology to behavioral science. Like most birds, Japanese quill have a special gland located at the base of their tail called the preen gland or oil gland. Here you can see it. This gland produces an oily substance that birds spread over their feathers while preening. The oil helps keep their feathers flexible, waterproof and free of parasites, making sure that they stay in great condition. Let's take a look at the tubes in the neck area. This tube is the trachea, also known as the windpipe. It has a rib structure, just like ours. You can feel the same rib structure by touching your own throat. These hard rings keep your throat open, so air can flow freely to the lungs. This tube is the esophagus, which has a soft, flexible structure and runs right behind the trachea. This is where food travels from the mouth down to the stomach. It is rather stretchy because quills often eat seeds that might be larger than you'd expect for such a small bird. The esophagus can expand to accommodate for this. 
About halfway down the esophagus, we find the crop. This is a specialized pouch where food is temporarily stored after the bird eats. It lets the quill gather food quickly, then digest it safely later, often when it's resting or hidden from predators. Inside the crop, food is moistened and softened, preparing it for digestion. Once the crop is full, it slowly releases food into the stomach in small manageable amounts to be digested. The leg muscles of the Japanese quill have powerful thighs for running, jumping and launching into flight and sturdy lower legs for gripping and stabilizing during foraging. These muscles are primarily dominated by fast twitch fibers, which are built for speed and strength. Fast twitch fibers contract quickly, making them ideal for rapid, powerful movements like running or takeoff. However, they tire easily because they rely on stored energy instead of oxygen to work, and this is why they appear pale. They don't need as much blood or oxygen as other muscle types. While fast twitch fibers dominate the leg muscles, some slow twitch fibers are also present, supporting the endurance required for walking and foraging over longer periods. In contrast to fast twitch fibers, slow twitch fibers are adapted for endurance. They contract more slowly, but can keep going for long periods because they use oxygen to produce energy. These fibers are darker in color due to a higher concentration of blood vessels and a protein called myoglobin, which stores oxygen. The color of the muscles reflect their function. For example, the quill's breast muscles are pale because they are packed with fast twitch fibers, suited for short bursts of flight rather than sustained flying. In contrast, pigeons have darker breast muscles, rich in slow twitch fibers, which allow them to fly long distances without tiring. Next, I will show you how birds keep securely perched on branches, even while they sleep. It is called the flexor tendon mechanism. See how the toes automatically curl and grip as I bend the ankle? This happens because the tendons running from the toes to the ankle are pulled tight when the ankle flexes. It's a passive system, no muscles are needed for the toes to lock onto a branch. When the bird rests, its own weight tightens the tendons, keeping the feet securely perched, even when it sleeps. Here we have the pectoralis major, the primary flight muscle responsible for the powerful downstroke of the wing during flight. Beneath it lies the supracoracoideus, a smaller muscle that drives the upward wing stroke. These two muscles work together to enable flight, with the pectoralis providing strength and the supracoracoideus handling the return motion. Removing it will give us a clearer view of the keel and the organs below. Time for a quick cool fact about quills. In 1990, they even made history when 43 Japanese quill eggs were sent to space, resulting in 8 successful hatchlings. These were the first birds to hatch successfully in space. The tiny chicks struggled with moving and gripping surfaces in an environment without gravity, which made eating a difficult task. But in a later mission, they sent four adult quills, each equipped with a special harness to help them stay upright while feeding. You will notice that while the keel is well developed, it's much smaller and less pronounced than the keel we saw in the pigeon during an earlier dissection. The keel serves as the anchor point for the flight muscles. A larger keel means more room for muscle attachment, which translates to greater power for sustained flight. Pigeons are strong flyers, they are built for long distances and continuous activity, so their keel is significantly larger to support their large pectoral muscles. As mentioned before, quills don't need to sustain long flights. Instead, they use short bursts of powerful wing beats to escape predators. This smaller keel suits their quick explosive takeoffs and short distance flights perfectly. Now let's move forward and take a closer look at the internal structures. I will have to remove the keel for this. The dark colored organ that I remove here is the liver. Here we can see the quill's stomach. Unlike mammals, birds have a two-part stomach. The first part is called the proventriculus, also known as the glandular stomach. This part of the stomach secretes digestive enzymes and chemically breaks down food, much like our own stomachs. However, birds have a second chamber in the stomach, which we don't have. This is called the gizzard. The gizzard is highly muscular and often contains small stones or grit that birds ingest. These stones act like teeth, helping the gizzard grind and crush food mechanically, particularly tough materials like seeds and grains. 
This is the small intestine, where most of the nutrient absorption takes place. It is long and coiled and gives it plenty of surface area for breaking down fats, proteins and carbohydrates. The small intestine works closely with the liver and gallbladder, using bile and enzymes to help digest these nutrients efficiently. Next, we can see the cica. That's these two finger-like pouches located at the junction of the small intestine and the large intestine. The cica is specialized for fermenting plant material, particularly tough fibers like cellulose. Inside, beneficial bacteria break down these fibers, allowing the quilt to extract additional nutrients from its diet. Next, the digested material moves into the colon, which is the final section of the large intestine. Unlike in mammals, the colon in birds is short and simplified. Its main function is to reabsorb water and compact the remaining waste into a manageable form, which is then excreted through the cloaca. If you are wondering what these large oval organs are, those are the testes. Alright, that's about it! Thank you so much for watching! We hope you learned something new today! And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about quills, beetles or anything else we covered. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We aim to post new content every other week. See you next time!